Hello, Homestead. This is Greg Gillio. I'm the principal of Homestead High School, and I'm here with another weekly video message. Uh, this is for Friday, October 29th, if you can believe it, the last Friday in October, uh, right next to Halloween. And uh, we're about ready to hit November, so I can't believe we're getting this far into the year. But I'm going to uh, share my screen here and get going with our uh, information. So again, as I mentioned, this is October 29th. Um, we are starting with our shout outs and recognitions. First one is for Edmund Kwong. He is our photography and multimedia design teacher. Uh, and the shout out was specifically for coming out to girls varsity volleyball matches to take amazing action photos. And you may often see uh, Mr. Kwong at many of our events. Uh, he is the guy with the big telephoto lens that's out there taking photos. Um, so we do appreciate uh, his capturing a lot of the action there. Um, the other one was not necessarily for a person, uh, although people were behind this. It was for this year's homecoming activities. And I'll, I'll read the whole thing out. Said, I hope that others have expressed the sentiment that this year's homecoming activities seem to work, work really well in terms of getting student participation. I realize that many might like the homecoming dance tradition, but I think that the after school activities seem to be a better fit in terms of an activity that more students would participate in. And I would say, I agree, there was a lot more kids hanging around after school, after the parade. So that was really nice. And it was also the carnival was pretty fun. Um, also, it seemed uh, to real it seemed to increase uh, attendance at the football game. I've never seen the stands that crowded. I would also agree with that. Uh, even my skeptical seniors seem to enjoy the event. I think that the free drinks and snacks really helped. Uh, so thank you for that. Again, thank you to all the ASB folks and, and staff who did uh, put on the uh, activities this year. And I, I do agree that the the, uh, we, the the carnival was a lot of fun this year and it's just a good time, good feel all around. So it was much, a much needed in-person event. So it was really fun. Uh, moving on to our questions and concerns. Uh, first one here says, science doesn't support a need for masks to be worn outdoors. So why is everyone required to do this at Homestead? Well, just first off, it's not a Homestead only requirement. It is a district requirement. It's one that our district came across. And actually the, this statement's not 100% accurate. While it is true that, you know, being outside you don't necessarily need to have a mask, that's, but that's when you're not when you're able to social distance. And so if you're taking a walk along the beach or on a trail somewhere, or even just walking down the street going past people, um, you don't necessarily need a mask. But if you have been on a high school campus, uh, there is a ton of close activity going on there where kids are walking past each other in hallways, when they sit down at the tables to eat lunch, when they're just hanging out. Um, it, it is definitely uh, not a social distancing event. So, um, <clears throat> you know, there are other districts in our in our SCVAL league that are also mandating it, but not everybody is. We may be a little more strict than others. And again, this this third bullet point where kids do not social distance when being social. Um, and so that's really the reason why we're wearing it. And so, again, we can point to the numbers here that we've only had a total of eight people, seven students and one staff member on our campus out of a total of 2,500 who have tested positive. I think that's a pretty good and low number. So um, again, I, I would say that uh, in this piece of science that definitely shows uh, that the masks are working as well as the vaccines and, and the HVAC unit. And then for the district, again, only 32 people out of a total of 15,000. So that's a very, very low percentage. Um, and so again, when we're looking at trying to keep kids safe, we are making sure that everyone's getting vaccinated, uh, that they are it's an improved HVAC system, and then those masks, those three things together are really what are allowing us to continue doing in-person learning with minimal interruption. So um, I, I'm gonna you know, say that, that, yeah, you're right. Masks don't have to be worn outdoors, but when in this situation, when there's close quarters, there's lots of people there, there are people who are unvaccinated, it is definitely uh, something that has been helping us stay safe. So it is something that our district will continue to be doing for the time being. Um, this one said, hey, I don't like the new policy that states students can't change classes during tutorial. Well, good for you because um, actually it's not in existence anymore. There was a time right in the very beginning of school where we were enforcing the fact that we wanted students to stay in a single classroom in that first grading period, that first six weeks, because kids had not been on campus. They had not really, we had half the school who'd never really done tutorial before. So we were trying to really uh, in, reinforce the fact that you need to stay in the class, get work done, uh, and, and do that. And so after that six week period, we started to loosen up on that because we had students who do need to go between classes. But if there were reasons or exceptions, we would make those exceptions um, right now. So a student can change classes. Uh, they must get a pass from their teacher. Um, and that's always the way we've operated for tutorial. Again, we just kind of did this little uh, tune up in that first six weeks. So that has not been in effect for a while now. 
Um, and But really, we do also want kids to start thinking about the number of times they change tutorial, classes and tutorials. It's only 35 minutes long. So if you are you know, trying to go to three different classes, you, when you factor in walking time and getting in there and getting so that you really, you've cut a significant amount of time down. So how effective will that really be if you're trying to connect with teachers? So um, really optimally, you stay there the whole time, maybe once time you change, but again, there's no limit right now, uh, but we just don't want kids wandering between classes and, and wasting that valuable time. Um, this concern came up and said, I'm confused. In last week's message, it said that November 5th is the end of the second grading period. Exams are on December 16th through the 13th through the 16th. So it sounds like the grading period ends before the exams. Let me try and clarify for you. So sorry that that was confusing. In each semester, there are three grading periods. Um, and so they, they happen every six weeks because that semester is 18 weeks long. So the first two that happen at the six week and the 12 week mark are progress reports. And so those are merely snapshots of where your student is at that time. They are not permanent. They don't get recorded anywhere other than to say these are a progress report and we mail them home uh, or email you look at them uh, you know, uh, on, online, um, but they're not permanent or final. That is only for the final grades that happen at the very end of the semester after exam. So again, um, kind of almost at it here. So that this November 5th is coming up. That's the end of the second grading period. That's a progress report. It's not final. It, you can still go up or down from that time until the end of the semester. It, they don't become final until after the final exams and after first semester is over. So again, hope that explains. So again, same thing happens second semester. Every, three, every six weeks, you'll have a progress report. And then another six weeks, you have a progress report. And then at the very end of the year, you have the final grades for the semester. Hope that clarifies. Um, this was a rather long one, and I kind of shortened it to uh, this statement. So AP Physics C is extremely challenging for students because of the unnecessarily difficult tests. Um, and, and just to be clear, AP, AP Physics C is probably one of our most challenging and rigorous courses on campus. Um, so this doesn't surprise me, to be quite honest. It is definitely a class where students struggle at first. Um, and so one thing I can tell you is that um, the, the, the testing strategy and, and things that they, the tests they use have not changed since before the pandemic. They, they actually changed them a little bit during the pandemic, but they're back to sort of that normal way that they've always done it before. So they haven't made tests more difficult, but to start off, tests are going to feel a whole lot more difficult because really when you're prepping kids for AP courses, you are trying to get them to you know, learn deeper and, 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 and harder strategies and area concepts. But there's also the idea that you'll be able to relate that in a very specific way for the AP tests. Um, and so to try and train kids on how to do those, they do a lot of, of, of practice and a lot of, of, of writing of tests and test answers. And it's not easy. It's not like picking you know, um, random choices or kind of getting, you know, check A, B, C, or D on this one. It really is having to craft answers in a very specific way. So the tests are the most difficult part of the class. And it does take students some time to really build those skills that they need. And, and it's, and, and, you know, it's just, it's going to take some time. Um, our, our staff has noticed us when kids are struggling and they have actually noticed in particularly that kids are struggling in their return to school and return to in-person learning. And so, um, you know, they're still dealing with the stress of that. And so they have really been discussing and looking at ways to best support those students. One of the problems with an AP course, though, is that you really do have a very quick timeline to get to May to get those students prepared for the for the test, which is the reason why 99% of the students take these exam, I take these classes. Um, it's they're challenging. They're they're great to have on the transcript. They make you look really good for schools, but also those those, those tests are what really uh, are the marker of, of whether you've been successful or not. So you might see a lot of struggling here in the beginning, and then it's going to start to get better as it goes along. Um, but when I did look at the progress reports from the last, uh, from the first six weeks, because we just haven't gotten the second one yet, but from that first one, um, I saw in the AP Physics C that there were only three students that were not earning the grade of an A, B, or, or C uh, at that particular time, and not any, no student was earning an F at that particular time. So I would still say that an A, B, or C in AP Physics C is a very good grade um, and it's and it's challenging. And again, you still have time to, to raise that grade. So who knows if those have gone up or down between, you know, you'll find that out on November 5th here, or if you can see where your great your student's grade is on Schoology, um, but they'd still have time to the end of the year. And if you are struggling, please talk to the teachers. Please try to set up some time. Um, tutorial is definitely busy at times. So you may not be able to get a chance to, to talk to teachers because AP, AP tutorials tend to get very full especially around test time. Um, so you might wanna try and arrange some time 
um, outside of the class if possible with the teacher to find out what's going on. Um, and then kind of along those lines, there was a, a comment, I got an email, so I thought I would put it in here too. And I kind of just put the whole thing in here because I think it had some interesting things. And again, this came from a parent, this didn't come from me or from a staff member. Um, but just one more comment regarding the skinny Wednesdays issue. I suspect that one of the main issues with how it affects students is the necessary pacing of material and homework that occur, occurs in the upper level math and science classes. That's an absolutely trace, true statement. Just what I said a minute ago, there is a very specific pacing that, they, that the teachers need to get on to get those students prepared by May for those tests. Um, so it, it is, a, it is a, a, a bigger load of work and it is a faster load of work. So that is definitely part of this problem. Um, it appears that these are the classes that have daily homework and I'm not sure how much information is provided to students so that they can work ahead. Um, again, Schoology, that if, if you're using this religiously and they're using it well, they can go in and they can look at calendars, they can go in and look at when things are due, so they can do some planning. Now, again, I can't speak for every single student and every single teacher, um, but again, that's one of the options of underneath Schoology is be able to see big chunks of the calendar to be able to plan out your time. Um, also with the pandemic, I suspect that many students might have overestimated how much time they would have to do homework and underestimated their other commitments. Again, this is also part of that struggle in, in person. Um, it might have felt more doable to sign up for more AP advanced classes since many extracurricular activities were on hiatus. And also students really did have more free time during remote learning. Even when we returned to school, they still had asynchronous class time on Wednesday. So yeah, those a lot of those things are still coming into play. Um, and so, but, but we also, again, are recognizing the, st the stress of those Wednesdays. And so we are looking at, at ways to try and reduce uh, the stress or, or, or allevi alleviate some of those areas. So we have been working from the superintendent on down to individual teachers and, and course-like teams, looking at strategies and ways that we can try to, to reorganize things and to do things uh, in a little different way that might re reduce some of that stress. So um, I, 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 this person said it way better than I ever could have, so I appreciate uh, sending this in. Um, and so again, I hope that kind of helps also give a little bit more detail. Again, it's still a problem. It's still something we're issuing, so I'm not trying to excuse skinny Wednesdays and saying everybody just deal with it. Um, there are some things that we need to deal with uh, as a staff. There are things again that you also need to deal with as a family too, to, to make sure that you're supporting your kids. So it is a joint effort here and with one that we're continuing to work on. Um, that brings us to our final slide, which is important dates. Uh, again, not much has changed here. Um, we've got canned food drive starting in November. And again, it's November next week. Uh, winter season, uh, sports season begins, it gets to be very busy here on campus because we have the overlap of the season with some of the folks going to playoffs and then winter season starting. Uh, we do have our cash for college event, go to our guidance and counselor guidance um, website and you'll see uh, more information about that. Um, there is the end of the second grading period, which is progress reports, which I just talked about a little bit ago. Um, four day weekend coming up for Veterans Day. So remember, there's no school on that Friday, uh, even though that's not the official holiday, there is the, no school on that day. Uh, then we also have a four day weekend coming up for Thanksgiving. Um, and these, these schedules can be found on our website. If you go to About Us, click under Bell Schedules, then go to Special Schedules, you'll see these on there. And even the final schedule, which I talked about last week, is up there now too. Um, and again, end of first semester is going to be uh, December 16th, about a month and a half away. So still time to raise and or lower grades. So keep make sure people are doing good work and keep working and stay with it. Go to those tutorials, do your homework, um, but also winter formal is coming up there too. So again, thank you very much. I hope uh, everyone has a wonderful thanks, not Thanksgiving, Halloween. I'm looking at my slide there. Has a wonderful Halloween and a restful weekend and we look forward to seeing you in November. All right, take care and we will talk to you later.